All right, just going to expose a really heretical website. This is called Bible.ca, and they're basically Roman Catholics. I think I believe they're Charismatics because they teach the same gospel that the uh, devil possessed Charismatics teach. But they are basically Roman Catholics. They'll speak against Roman Catholicism, but like they'll have done here. They'll have a show it like this. They'll have um, uh, what is it? False doctrines of the Roman Catholic Church. So they'll speak against Rome. But in terms of their gospel, they preach exactly what Rome preaches. And I'm going to show you that. So, and, and it's a number of different false doctrines they teach that are exactly the same as Roman Catholics. But here's the, they have their gospel, how to be saved, a stairway to heaven. And let's see how they say how to be saved. So, step one here. Okay, amen. Step two, believe. Step three, repent. Step four, confess our sins to others. Or confess our faith to others. Um chapter and verse on that where does it where we have to confess and they quote matthew chapter 10 which is not even written to a christian it's written to jews in the time of jacob's trouble they quote romans chapter 10 verse 9 to 10 but they won't read romans chapter 13 or romans chapter 10 verse 13 where it says call upon the name of the lord and of course they quote luke chapter 9 which the gospels are written to jews christians don't appear till acts chapter um acts chapter 7 or Ch acts chapter 11 sorry but where do you have to confess your faith to others to be saved? And look what they say step five is. Baptism or immersion for by immersion for the remission of sins. Exactly what the Catholics believe. The Catholics believe that baptism is part of salvation. Now, the difference is these guys, they say baptism by immersion. And the Catholics say you have to get baptized as a baby or just get baptized to be saved. But it's, it's Roman Catholicism. It's, it's um, not biblical salvation. And they say baptism. And of course they quote... Matthew 26, you know, Hebrews, who is Hebrews written to? It's written to Hebrews. They quote Acts chapter 2, which is written to Jews. And again, you're going to see these guys are non-dispensational. They don't rightly divide the word of truth. So they go back to all these verses that aren't even written to Christians. Because Acts 2 is primarily written to Jews. They're speaking to Jews in that passage. Uh, Christians don't appear, again, Christians don't appear until Acts chapter 11. Uh, they quote Hebrews. Again, Hebrews is written to Jews. Uh, it, that's why it's called Hebrews. The book is called Hebrews. Matthew 26, written to Jews. The Gospels are, are written to Jews. You know? uh, and they say, step six, remain faithful to death. You know, Of course, they're quoting that, that verse in Revelation where you have to remain faithful faithful until, until death. And what's it talking about? In the time of Jacob's trouble. Again, not even dispensationally for us. But you're going to see, not only are these guys non-dispensational, they're also pre, they're also um, post-millennial too. They, don't, they, they, they reject pre-millennialism. So apparently, I guess we're in the millennial kingdom right now or something like that. Funny, because the rapture hasn't happened yet. I mean, there's so many errors with these guys. I, again, I'm getting ahead of myself, but remain faithful till death. And they quote Revelation. And again, who is Revelation's written to? It's dispensationally in the time of Jacob's trouble, where you have where you can't deny the faith. You have you can't take the mark of the beast. So there is a faith work system in that time period, but it's not for us today. So again, this is the problem with not with not rightly dividing the word of truth. You just make a complete mess of the Bible, and you just take the entire Bible and say it's for us. Which is ridiculous. Uh, I mean, parts of the Bible can be for instruction in righteousness, but not for our salvation. Our gospel, Paul is our apostle to the Gentiles. Uh, you can see that in Romans chapter 11, verse 13, and Romans 15, 16. Paul is our apostle. So our gospel should primarily come from Paul. But you're going to see right here, um, they have, they got here some of the false doctrines they teach. Uh, general false doctrines. Uh, rapture and premillennialism. So they don't believe in the rapture and they don't believe in premillennialism. And you're also going to see they believe in uh, replacement theology. Uh, let me just see. Rapture, premillennialism, and dispensationalism are feuded. So they're non dispensational, which makes sense because they're just going all over the Bible and just picking parts out that aren't even written to us. But you're going to go down. I'm not going to go and refute all this because it's just so easy to refute. Uh, Israel land promise fulfilled in set tents, uh, 30. 1350 BC. Uh, can, I get, can I get a chapter and verse on that? They don't quote. They don't give a chapter and verse. Um, ridiculous. King Jesus is seated on the throne of David right now. So we're in the millennial kingdom right now. Okay. Again, chapter and verse, and they quote all these verses in the Old Testament. Um, those, are, those verses aren't speaking about. They're not speaking about Jesus sitting on the throne right now. You know, it's ridiculous. They're so messed up. And obviously it's because they're lost, so they can't understand scripture, but some of this stuff is just basic doctrine. Replacement theology or suppressionism is the true gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, I thought the gospel was the death, burial, and resurrection, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. I didn't know that replacement theology is the true gospel of Jesus Christ. And of course, they quote 
uh, they, they quote Galatians. And if you read the context, if you read Galatians, it's not saying we replace the Jews. It's just saying that we're partakers. We're grafted in through Jesus Christ. Ridiculous. The kingdom of the church. So they're, they're kingdom builders, just like the Roman Catholics. And just like the Catholics, they're non-dispensational. Uh, the kingdom of God was established on Pentecost. Um, the kingdom of God is spiritual fellowship with God. Romans, that's Romans fourteen seventeen. So we're not in the kingdom of God right now. The kingdom, of, well, if you're saved, you're in the kingdom of God. But they're thinking it's the kingdom of heaven. We're not in the kingdom of heaven right now. And the kingdom of God is spiritual fellowship with God. It's not the physical kingdom. Again, these guys are so messed up. You know, and and there's a funny one. Matthew twenty four was fulfilled in seventy A D when the temple was destroyed. Um, can I get a verse on that? Where does it say that in Matthew twenty four? Where where in Matthew 24 to talk about, I mean, how, you know, of course the, the temple was destroyed in 70 AD, but how does any of that stuff line up with Matthew 24? It's written to Jews, of course, the replacement theology, but it's written to Jews in the time of Jacob's trouble. You know, so messed up. Uh, Revelation 20, I can go down there. Um, Lateran theology, and gap theory, all this other stuff. Let's go. I'm, just, I'm trying to see if there's anything else I want to refute because this is just their the website just so hard. And not to mention the fact they're not even King James only. They use the new versions, the the Catholic Bibles, which again just backs up my point that they're Roman Catholics. Uh, and of course they they this spells the Catholic propaganda. John Nelson Darby, 1830, 1830. Okay, okay. if you're a post trip, if you're non dispensational. Stop whining. Stop saying, oh, D John Nelson Darby, just do a quick Wikipedia Google search of dispensationalism. Look down at history, and you're going to find it goes back to the second century, way before 1830. Yeah, so heretical. Uh, Bible doctrines. So, yeah, I mean, look at this this nonsense. And you're going to see here they, they try to refute eternal security. So they're, they're refuting Calvinism, and they talk about perseverance of the saints, the child of God, once saved cannot be lost. You know, the thing is a false doctrine that you cannot be lost. So apparently you're not sealed with the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to go through and debunk this thing on eternal security. Scripture refutation of eternal security. And you're going to see it goes back to the thing of them being non-dispensational. Because you cannot be non-dispensational and believe in eternal security. Because people who reject eternal security are always non-dispensational. Uh, they say you can fall from grace. Galatians chapter 5, verse 4. 14 or 1 to 4. And again, read the context of Galatians 5. I've done this in other videos. Um, the context of Galatians 5 is not saying you've lost your salvation. Read the context. Again, they rip this stuff out of context. In Galatians 5, Paul is talking about how, if you're because people are trying to go, because the entire book of Galatians were about people going back under the law. He's saying, okay, Christ, if you're going back under the law, then Christ died for no reason. Then you're falling from grace. You're, you're no longer under grace. You're back under the law. That's what Paul is talking about in Galatians 5. So again, they don't read the context of the passage. Uh, they quote 2 Peter 3.17, not written to Christians. James chapter 5, who is James written to? To the 12 tribes. That's, I mean, James chapter 1, verse number 1, is to the 12 tribes, not Christians. Um, weak brother may perish. Not, not Again, not, not, not even what the King James says, but they're using their Vatican versions. James chapter 5, again, not written to Christians, written to Jews. Uh, move away from the hope. Okay, not talking about salvation there. Depart from the living God. Okay, Hebrews, again, who is it written to? It's written to Hebrews. Again, this is rightly dividing the word of truth. You don't just take the whole Bible and just jumble it into one mess. You don't, and this is what happens when you do. Uh, Second Peter, not written to Christians. Uh, Second Peter, again. Again, our, our gospel should come from Paul. He's our apostle. But I, I love this, too. Uh, they quote Ezekiel 3.20 and Ezekiel 18.14-16, saying you can die from sin. Or die in sin. So apparently we're Jews under the, under the law now, apparently. We're back under the law, apparently. Which is funny, because that's what Paul was condemning in Galatians 5. They quote Matthew 25, and Matthew 25 is dispensationally at the end of the time of Jacob's trouble. It's about judging the people who went, who basically survived the time of Jacob's trouble. Again, just a complete failure to rightly divide the word of truth. Uh, Romans 11, they quote Romans 11, where it says how you can, you can be um, cut off. And if you read Romans 11, it's not talking about you being cut off in terms of salvation. It's talking about nationally speaking. I mean, just twisting the scriptures so much. Uh, I love this. They quote Revelation chapter 3. So apparently we're in the time of Jacob's trouble. But of course they don't even believe in that. They think we're in the millennial kingdom apparently. Uh, Matthew 24, they quote uh, James. I mean, it's funny, they can't see that, that James is clearly to the 12 tribes. I mean, read the very first verse in the book of James. Uh, parable of the sower. Okay, parables. Again, the gospel accounts written to Jews. Fallen from grace. I mean, again, they ripped that out of context. The context is talking about 
going back under the law and Christ dying if Christ died if you're back under the law then Christ died for no reason I think quote John and completely twisting what it's saying Hebrews chapter 6 in the time of Jacob's trouble uh, all this other stuff Acts chapter 20 uh, 1 Timothy 6 9 to 10 you know you're not even talking about salvation because what they're doing is they're confusing your salvation with your walk because your walk is the process of sanctification they're making they're mixing that with salvation uh, Revelation passages again who is Revelation written to it's, writ it's written in the time of Jacob's trouble and of course like this one Old Testament passages so apparently we're back under the law we're Jews under the law now apparently you know nice um, be steadfast and unmovable all this other stuff Galatians 6 9 you reap what you sow. Okay, talking about rewards, not talking about you losing your salvation. You know, you reap what you sow. You know, also, also, that could also be said, you know, if you do something bad, it'll come back to get you, that kind of stuff. Not talking about salvation. Uh, practice these things and God will be with you. Okay. It's funny because they won't quote Romans chapter 8. Let me show you some scripture. Uh, let me just go back. Actually, I want to see if I can find some more stuff on this wicked website. Uh... And again, I say that I say they're Roman Catholics because they're they're teaching Roman Catholic doctrine to a T. Uh, Apocrypha is not expired. Tradition wars. Doctrinal evolutions. Okay, nothing else I wanted to cover. I mean, there's some stuff I wanted to cover. I think that was all of it. Uh, you have Islam as pagan monotheism. That's true. I mean, Islam Islam is essentially pagan moon worship. Uh, I'm just trying to see if they have anything else I want to go through. Uh, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just skimming through this thing. Oh, I love this one. The Holy Spirit does not guide us to understand the Bible. Let's say if I want to go through this one. Uh, Emulation of the Holy Spirit understand the Bible is false doctrine. Contrary to solo scripture or mage Protestants or bad as Catholics and Orthodox. Mm, I'm just, I'm sorry, again, I'm just skimming through this thing. And it's funny because they, they they quote all these different creeds. So they're saying, so they're saying it's false. The Holy Spirit does not cannot. You have to. You, it won't lead you into all truth. And it's funny they quote all these creeds. Um, since when are these man-made creeds? When did, since when do they determine, determine doctrine? Fine, just like the Catholics that they're rejecting Scripture alone. Uh, falsely believe you know Protestant Reform creeds. Falsely believe the Holy Spirit guides to understand the Bible. Uh, it's what the Bible teaches. The Holy Spirit, the Spirit will lead you into all truth. You know, talking about the Spirit of Truth. You can read about that in the Gospel of John. The Spirit will lead you into all truth. Um, you know, it's ridiculous. I mean, they're, they're just like Roman Catholics, all this other stuff. Uh, seeing it's contrary to Holy Sola Scripture. So yeah, I was just skimming through that. I wanted to see if there's anything else I wanted to refute. Uh, but again, this is what happens when you just... And of course they're lost, so they can't understand Scripture. But let me show you some Scripture that just destroy their heresies. So if you want to see some good stuff that proves um, dispensationalism, here's a good one. Um, there, there's lots of passages, but the best passage I can run to that prove uh, dispensationalism, dispensational theology, and there's so many other ones too. This is just one of them I can go to. Actually, let me just check my notes. Uh, I have some notes down here. Yeah, there's three passages Romans 16, Ephesians 3, and Galatians. I'm going to go through all four of them. Uh, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 2 to 5. You have heard, or if you have heard of the dispensation, hmm, biblical word, of the grace of God is given to me. Or it's given me to you, to your word. Sorry, mix me up there. Not good at reading on a computer. How that by the revelation he may know he made known unto me the mystery, as I afore or as I wrote afore in a few words, whereby ye read ye may understand the knowledge at my knowledge. Sorry, in the mystery of Christ. Look at verse five. I mean, you want a good passage that proves dispensationalism, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto the holy apostles by the prophets of the Spirit. Wait a second, the Holy Spirit can reveal things to you? Um, that would contradict this website's claim that the Holy Spirit doesn't, gu doesn't guide you. Um, the Holy Spirit revealed this to Paul. He was writing under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. Look at this. In other ages was not made known unto the sons of men. So wait a second, it was not made known to the previous prophets. It was revealed to Paul. Uh, that's dispensationalism. You know? And another good passage is Romans chapter 16, verse 25 to 26. Again, Paul speaking. Not to him, that is the power to establish you according to my gospel. Okay, Paul's gospel, Paul's our apostle. 
and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began, but is but now is made manifest by the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. Hmm. The revelation was kept a mystery since the world began? Hmm. Another good passage proving dispensationalism. God reveals things to different prophets. That's dispensationalism. Uh, Colossians chapter 1, verse 24 to 27. Who now rejoice in my sufferings for you, and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of, the, of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church. Christ, you know, his body is the church. It's not some physical building you go to. Of whom I made a minister, Paul's our apostle, according to the dispensation of God. That word again, dispensation. Oh, man. Which is given to me, or which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God, even the mystery which had been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints. So it was hid and now made manifest. To whom God would make known what is the riches of his glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Hmm. So it was a mystery until Paul received it? Wow. Again, those are just three passages that just totally. I mean, they just, just demolish non-dispensationalism. You can go down there. But if you want some proof, I'll show you some proofs on the um, pre-trip rapture. Uh, the best passage I can go to to prove a pre... I mean, I'll show you two proofs, actually. Uh, Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 13. And here, here's how you do it. You'll say, give me one verse that proves the pre-trip rapture. Uh, I can't give you one verse, but I can show it to you by comparing Scripture with Scripture. Ephesians 1.13 In whom you also trusted, after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. You're sealed with the Holy Spirit. Again, compare that to, if you read verse 14 actually, who is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemp redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Jump down to Ephesians chapter 4. What is the purchased possession? What is the redemption? Ephesians 4.30 And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. It's the rapture, the day of redemption, when your body is redeemed. And it's funny, you're sealed. So wait a second, you can't... So wait a second, if you lose your salvation, you're, you're not sealed, apparently. You become unsealed. You know, so how does that work? But again, you're sealed until the day of redemption. Well, not true in the time of Jacob's trouble. Uh, Revelation 14, 9 to 11, because you can't take the mark of the beast. Revelation 14, 9 to 11, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man, not just un unsaved people, if any man, worship the beast in his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone, in the presence of the holy angels, and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up for ever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast in his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. So wait a second, you have a contradiction there. Paul says you're sealed with the Holy Spirit. You're sealed until the day of redemption, which is the rapture. But Revelation 14 says if any man takes the mark, they get God's wrath and go through the lake of fire. So the rapture must happen before the time of Jacob's trouble because these Paul, it would contradict Paul. Sorry, my, <coughs> Sorry, my cough. If a Christian goes into this time period, they could lose their salvation by taking the mark, and that would make God... And what Paul wrote under the inspiration of Holy Ghost, under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, a lie. So a Christian cannot go into this time period because if he did, it would make God a liar because he says you're sealed. So that's a good proof. Another another good proof is First Corinthians chapter six, verse eleven. And such were some of you, but you are washed, but you are sanctified, but you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. So in this verse, Christ, it says that Christ is sanctifying us. Christ is doing the sanctifying. He, he uh, justifies us. Well, not true in the time of Jacob's trouble. Revelation four, or 7, verse 14. And I said unto them, Sir, thou knowest, he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation. Notice that it says great tribulation, not the great tribulation. The phrase the tribulation is never a title for this coming time period. Uh, and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Uh oh, we have a contradiction there. In what Paul, according to the Paul, according according to what Paul wrote in First Corinthians six eleven, Christ washes us. But according to this passage, the th saints in the time of Jacob's trouble, they're washing their own robes. So, if a Christian goes into this time period, what does Christ's blood like not cover you anymore or something like that? Again, if a Christian goes into this time period, it would make God a liar. So. Those are two passages. So again, it comes back to the thing of the rapture must happen before the time of Jacob's trouble. 
So uh, don't be deceived by this this uh, this heresy of this this uh, this wicked website right here, uh, Bible.ca. Yeah, they're, they're um, preaching uh, the, they're preaching Roman Catholicism pretty much. The Catholic Church always has been pre-trib, always non-dispensational, always conditional security, and all of them are doctrines of devils. So don't be deceived. This is Roman Catholicism. They'll, they'll attack Rome, but then they'll preach Rome. You know, it's funny. It makes perfect sense. But don't be deceived. God bless you. Goodbye.